Hello. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do a quick reading today. I want to do post full moon energy. It's going to be pretty short. If you haven't noticed, I've been getting better at those or I've been trying to short for me is like 38 minutes. Um, but let's see if this one can be like 24, 24 minutes. Um, I'm geeking out today <laughs> for a few different reasons, but primarily because I was at a trade show this morning for my normal job and there was a gems, crystals and minerals show in the adjacent venue. So I took my hard earned pennies over there and I got some new stuff. Cause honestly, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do it, a trade show is the place to do it. I mean, look at her, look at this, look at this. It's got some heft to it. This is not a small stone. This is not a pocket stone. This is a rose quartz, um, can never have enough rose quartz. $18, be like, be like 40 bucks on the internet at least. And then I have selenite in every corner of my home. I've got all kinds of selenite. Uh, obviously raw stones that are not polished are less expensive. This green quartz, six bucks. You can't, you can't get much better than that, kitty. This was $2. This would be like at least 10 elsewhere. So I'm thrilled. In fact, I had, um, I have a little list of crystals that I need. And I was like, oh, I should have brought my list because I didn't really miss the mark. I was trying to remember from memory. Ocean Onyx. Yeah, Ocean Onyx. Peach Selenite. Um, red Jasper. What I was looking for was Red Garnet. I want a small one and a big one. Um, I already have Celestite, but I want a small one. I want a pocket Celestite. And this is Amazonite. And this is malachite and i this one was six bucks it wasn't all those were a, a dollar can you believe it um i would have spent all my money there and i mean all of it but i was only trying to get just a few just a few this is my day is made <laughs> my day is made okay so we're gonna get into this and I'd like to do um, three cards from the Ethereal Visions, the normal edition. The thing about it is that if you have a deck for a long time, it takes on your energy. And so like, I know these cards better. They're all soft and worn. My updated one, I'm still getting to know it. Two of cups on the bottom. So, uh, save it, save all of it. I do have messages. But that's not why we're sitting down right now. So I'm going to save all of them. And we're just going to get a reading out. Uh, that's unusual. Usually at least I fire off a few. But we're going to save all of it today. So first card out is going to be current energy. And then we're going to do energy to embrace, energy to release. And then I'm going to do hidden energy, sticking point and incoming energy from the Psychic Tarot. All right. Current energy is the Four of Swords. Okay, so we're in a place of healing, rest, rejuvenation, contemplation, gearing up, energy to embrace, is the artist drafting, remembering that you hold the crayons to your canvas. I had a super funny vision. I might actually make this because I think it's pretty funny. Um, I continuously get these visions of myself as like a 1950s housewife wearing like an apron. And I'm like, hey there, do you? And it's like an infomercial. And this one was along the lines of like breaking out of the bonds of capitalism and like... Um, <laughs> It was like, do you resent almost every, you know, facet of your obligations and whatnot? Well, guess what? It's there for a reason. That is all carefully designed to elicit the very discomfort that you take within it to wake you up. That's how the world works. That's how our souls develop our soul contracts. We want to go through challenge to learn and become better. That's why we have multiple incarnations as well. Oh my God, I'm just so obsessed. <laughs> I 
I may look like a material girl or that I'm high maintenance, but I'm not easy to please. Just give me a rock. <laughs> What's our energy to release? So this is taking us back to the idea that we see a lot of things as immovable, but that is only when we're placing stock in the wrong things and seeing the feedback loop within our lives as not editable, authorable, maneuverable. Energy to release is the Ace of Wands. So this is really interesting. Uh, give me a clarifier from the... Actually, I want this card. I can see it poking out and it's speaking to us. Okay. Okay. So this card came out the other day to end off my reading and I was like, we love this. Why? Because we're collapsing all that energy down into the new manifested start. These things kind of go together, right? The artist kind of gives a magician type energy, but the, the Ace of Wands... My clarifier was the Knight of Pentacles. So this is in the energy to release position because sometimes after the full moons when we do these clearings and we're going through times of emotional intensity or confusion and everything's like peaking and rising up to be released and acknowledged. And then we do that releasing. We're like, oh my God, I'm fixed. <laughs> I've become enlightened. You know, I'm, I'm ready. I feel good. And it's something of a, of a spiritual faux pas to ever think you've made it anywhere because that's not going to happen. It's a journey. There are always next levels, no matter how high vibrational and good and grounded and seeing all the synchronicities and hearing messages, you know, from, from your spirit guides or having dreams that, you know, give you confirmation. All of that be, can be going really well and really um, like high vibe, but it doesn't mean that, you know, that process is just the continual expansion of being able to maintain that. So your life is more often like that than not. Um, but sometimes when we get like too wrapped up into how good that space is, then if something that goes against that occurs, it can trip us up if we don't know how to keep the same high vibrational approach. You know, it's not like stimulus... Um, provocation from external environment comes in and changes that it gives you a chance to take it further and continue fortifying that energetic level of acceptance you know and and water off of a duck's back type of thing as you move through whatever may happen in your life so it's basically telling us don't get too far ahead of yourself there is a new beginning it is really passionate and spiritually aligned and creative and it's what you want and we're thinking about that and we're meditating on it but it's, it's coming about slowly, and we talked about this the other day too, but that's because the Knight of Pentacles, while slow, is the one that always gets there. You know, the other guys might get distracted, go on a little side quest and, and never come back. Um, so that's good. And it makes sense, right? Not getting ahead of, not putting the cart before the horse. So now we're going to do hidden energy, hidden energy. Oh, I'm get Take two from the top to clarify the energy to embrace is what I'm hearing. So we're going to do that before we get into this. Take two from the top to clarify the energy to embrace. <laughs> I see why. I see why we wanted to do that. So our energy to embrace, right? It's the artist. Now that Uranus has stationed direct, we will not have any planets in retrograde until April. That will not happen again for the rest of the year. So the first four months of this year, I mean, really three times moving right along here in January, this is your time to make some stuff happen. And then when April hits, you're going to be raising the babies that you gave birth to this quarter. Uh... Here we go. Justice and the chariot, okay? Major arcana coming in to flank the energy to embrace. It's saying, move forward with confidence. You have nothing astrologically holding you back now. So it's going to feel easier to do the things that you've been trying to do, that you have ideas about, even though they're moving at a grounded pace. I mean, it's pentacles, right? The reason why it's slow is because it's not just idea. It's not just conception, it's bringing it all the way down so that it can manifest and you can have it and experience it. Um, and then the idea with justice is that the scales are continuing to balance. And so it's all about knowing that even if you don't have, um, well, um, okay, I'm seeing two sets of scales. This is why I got a whiteboard. Yeah. 
All right, let's try this out. Let's try this out because I said I would do it. Two sets of scales. Two sets of scales. Um, Sorry, just hang on one minute. I'm like <laughs> remembering that I did all this. And by that, I mean, I got whiteboard markers and I got a whiteboard. It's why I was at Staples looking at Shaq. Let me bring this message back because now I forget why I've drawn these. You see this? Yes. Okay. So we've got two scales, right? And we're, we're constantly moving things from side to side in the 5D, which is the spiritual realm where we're in a more collective consciousness state where if you live from that place and you're integrated with your higher self, um, then you don't have to go into meditation to access that. You're more united with that higher self. And it's not like, can I hear my intuition? It's more of how you behave because you're um, in line with that higher level of, of reality. Um, and then we have the 3D scale. And I'm... S so shifting the balances back and forth in the 5D is a really lucrative thing to do even if you don't see it manifesting because that's the energy feedback loop still. So if you haven't thought about, and I mean, I know this is kind of abstract, but if you haven't thought about, if you only ever try to make change happen in the 3D, um, then it might not be lasting um, because I believe that lasting change, it's it's conceived of from like the pull of the, the spirit. That's where our best ideas come from. Um, they're going to be the most aligned. Even those ideas that are like kind of crazy. Like sometimes I get the impulse to do something at a certain time. And then later I'm like, that was the best time to do that. Universe had my back. But me in the moment, I was like, am I sure this is a smart move? This seems unplanned. <laughs> but if you're, if you're willed to move in a certain way, it could be because there's some type of like investment, right? Certain things, if they don't happen in the past, they can't affect you in the present. Um, and so we plant seeds and stuff, but more so the point that I'm wanting to make is that if you generate, um, you know, good ideas and stuff, and there's not a way for them to trickle down, because these are in, a, in effect a mirror of one another, uh, a lot of the things that people do change at the 3D level when they're balancing these scales um, is a reflection of their subconscious 5D scales, if they're not in touch with those or even a you know a believer that something like that exists and so that means that their the shadow side or their unhealed unintegrated components like spiritually are going to let me put this back without knocking everything down you just stay there though okay yeah uh justice for me is talking about bringing those two sets of scales into, um, mm, I'm seeing an old vision, an old vision that I spoke of um, probably two months ago now, and I was talking about the 3D world or 3D paradigms and Age of Capricorn type of paradigms, like those things, like a subway car crumpling in an accident, but there's a new kind of subway car. It's just not made of metal and density. It's made of like light. It's a light silica body train and it's pulling away from this wreckage and it's bringing a new way of being to the people who want to get on that train so it's almost like these are not going to be as separate anymore because of what i said about bringing it's not like i meditate and i go into the higher self it's about bringing that they become one and so it's also kind of like that 5d train that high vibrational train that's pulling away is um It's not like it's a change of state because we're not going to exist in the world 
on earth anymore but it's because the earth herself like the energy grids of the earth is awakening to that frequency and so it's becoming the same thing it's becoming the same thing spiritual strength you see that's a good example of like the buddha in the background the glowing higher self and then the man in his physical body right having the Having the knowing that you're never separated from that wise aspect of yourself that always has the right answers for you. Okay. <sighs> okay. This is the hidden energy. I've been waiting to see this. I've been feeling this. I've been waiting to see this and I've been feeling it. So... Sacral chakra. Sacral chakra is our second chakra. Uh, and it's our center of creativity, of sexual energy. And if you have lower back pain, lower back pain, you could have sacral blockages. Um, Clarify from this deck with Sacral Chakra, Ten of Pentacles, and the, well, the High Priestess. I want to pull this too because I saw the High Priestess card when I pulled this out because they're both um, two, two, two. This is a two card. Ten of Pentacles. So in order to feel fully abundant and have an easier time with actual generation of finances and abundance in this life, we have to root into the sacral, the root chakra, the lower chakras need to be healed in order to have that. And there is sexual energy in those chakras, but sexual energy can go either way. It's, it's, it's creative energy. Um, people can have overactive lower chakras and be very closed in their upper chakras. And I don't think that's the case to the people I'm speaking to, uh, right? But I, but I think that for people who tend to be more spiritual or like grew up, you know, thinking about certain things or whatever, have a harder time actually grounding it into the body and like taking the crown chakra activity and the third eye and all of that into the body. Um, And I'm seeing this going together, okay? I'm seeing Justice, the Knight of Pentacles, the Ace of Wands, what I talked about with the scales and stuff. It's going to help us to realize that when we, like, it's like, is it, when, we, when we dream about things that we want to do and we don't, I mean, we obviously don't have those things yet because we just thought of it. And I'm like, that, that would be a great idea. I want to do that. So it's outside of you. It's not real. But it is real in the fact that you just thought of it <laughs> and it could happen in a quantum space of pure potential. So if it's, you know, aligned with the highest good, if you don't, if you're not manifesting from like a convoluted, unhealed space, if you are, you can still go towards it and the universe will, you know, taper your direction to get you to an aligned space on your way to manifesting it. And you'll end up manifesting something else if it wasn't aligned in the first place, but it's kind of like we're thinking about bringing these ideas when you conceive of something and have a new idea for like a project or a way to do something that you didn't see before. You take that energy and it's outside of you and you bring it down like you imagine it filling your body like you're a container like that dream or the success of that implemented thing that plan in your body into the earth um, being able to run these things into the physical more easily manifest more easily and have a lot of material stability to do that more and more and more and have an easier time of creating new ideas that don't have to be so slow moving because we're and I'm seeing a pipe cleaner a pipe cleaner again because we're clearing out the chakra system and we've been talking about the heart chakra for weeks at least on you know my channel and stuff and um and the throat chakra. 
Um, but I haven't spent a lot of time on the sacral or the third eye or, uh, you know, the others. So now we'll do the biggest sticking point here. It's the Ace of Cups. In this deck, it says love begins. It's a really beautiful image. Um, and the message that I'm hearing with this is that it requires some type of sacrifice or compromise. So this could be incoming or outgoing. It could just be the thought of engaging with love. But there's like an intimidation around it because it's the biggest sticking point. So what I'm getting is that there's... I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that yet. We're gonna shuffle out a clarifier before we get into this all the way. And before I do that, sticking point, let me get incoming. I mean, I just said that, sacrifice. Incoming energy is sacrifice. Okay. So I'm gonna read from that card. Um, I knew there was a reason why we pulled this first. This is the Hanged Man, Major Arcana in this deck. Okay. Let's see. Powerful achievements are usually born as a result of great sacrifice. This card represents self-sacrifice and a time when you should look around your life to see what needs to be released. By surrendering and letting go, there will be more room to receive. The rewards for this are transformation, wisdom, gratitude, and enlightenment. This card signifies that there's a situation happening or about to occur in your life and you can't control the outcome. This would be a good moment to pause, rest, have patience, reflect, and meditate. It would be wise to stand back so you can learn to look at events with a more understanding and intuitive eye. Try to view people, issues, or problems from a different perspective. If you can achieve this, it will have a profound effect on your soul and your life. The sacrifice card can also symbolize a period of transition and change. The solutions you seek may be slow in coming, for it could be necessary to live into the answers. Mm, that's such an important message. Um, I think people struggle with the, uh, the concept of manifestation because they don't have the immediate gratification of it. But when you know, this is the, the classic example, but when you know that you've ordered at a restaurant, you're not sticking your head in the kitchen. You're not getting up and leaving because you, you know that it's coming. You're chilling. You're talking to the person that you're waiting for the food with, you know? You're like having a little bread in the meantime. And you're enjoying that because you don't just go to a restaurant to be served immediately and leave. You go to have an experience and to enjoy yourself, you know, as you're waiting for the food to come out while you're enjoying the food. And then you might order more, right? You might order dessert after that. So it's about enjoying the stages to the process. And this card is talking about not needing to scale back and see solutions before you move forward, but knowing that as you live through the motions that you're compelled to make, moment to moment, but day by day, week to week, then the solutions become clear. You're not going to be able to see them unless you start moving blindly in some cases. Accept the things that you can't control. Heal and leave the past behind. Move toward your future and watch for new doors opening and paths that are being shown to you. So I'm thinking... That this, I mean, sacrifice, it's very interesting to me that the hanged man is called sacrifice um, in this deck. <clears throat> I'm going to clear for a sec here. Because it sort of feels like we're struggling to correct or eliminate some kind of pattern that has to do with love. And keep in mind the, the Ace of Cups, you know, speaking of love, it can be self-love. It can be familial, relational, I mean, friendship type of love. It doesn't have to be romantic soulmate type of love in every case. Um, and so there's something about our approach to love in those general terms that has not been for our highest good, basically. It's been a learned way of interacting in our self-love or friendship love 
or romantic love that doesn't entirely like meet the mark of a, of a healed relationship either with ourselves or our friends or our partners. Um, and so what we're taking a look at is that. And now we're going to clarify as I shuffle out. Let me ask a question to guide it. Actually, no, let me not. I, I'm hearing that I'll know what to say when the cards come out, because I always do. <laughs> it's a stalemate energy. So again, it's like not being able to see, not knowing what to do, being able to do something. This energy can function for us, though. Same with the hanged man, right? This kind of has a hanged man vibe to it. Uh, more, more clarification. If you've been watching since the summer, you know that I pulled these cards out all the time together because we were doing a lot of healing around um, limited perceptions and fighting things blindly for the sake of it, because what we're doing when we defend things out of default is protecting our ego's resistance to acknowledging things. And so I kind of see, I mean, going back to our current energy, we're in the Four of Swords. Four of Swords is kind of like this. But the Four of Swords energy is that culmination current energy about everything. I mean, I feel that because it's like, whew, that full moon, like I was super affected by that full moon. And now it's like, okay, we're, we're out of, I mean, I said it was going to last for a few days, but, and it is, the energy is still here. Um... But the intensity has subsided a little bit. And so the Four of Swords is about all of the things. It's about ourselves and our, um, our projects and careers and our relationships and our goals. It's, it's the whole gamut. This is more so about a specific situation that we're at a crossroads with or in a stalemate with and what's interesting here is that what i was talking about the other day is that uranus stationing direct does bring back its own loop around the fact that a planet is is retrograde um people always talk about mercury retrograde being this horrible thing that comes in and creates miscommunication and that's kind of true it can f things up but there's a purpose for it a lot of the times when we have to go back and uh, make sure that something was you know crossed and dotted it's because we made a mistake in the first place and we want to go back and do it correctly. And so the bigger loop, Mercury retrogrades often, Uranus not so much, it has a different orbit and, and it's bringing back, I mean, the whole cycle is from, is from August. It's from the Lion's Gate basically around 8-8, 8-8-2-3. Eight, 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 um, I was thinking, I was like, well, what am, what's coming back for me? Like, what did I do? I don't remember anything from what I was doing in August. I'm, I'm kidding. Obviously, I do, but time moves really quickly. Uh, and then I was like, oh, I've had a list on this table that I generated sitting here using red ink, writing down everything I wanted to release and everything I wanted to welcome on the Lion's Gate. I put it here and it's been sitting here all that time. And so I picked it up and I was like, this is what's coming back around for me. And it sure is. So it's also asking us, though, with these cards, um, there's perseverance, but there's also perseverance, like with anything, I think we can start to persevere around, it's like stubbornness, right? It's persevering around the wrong things if our eyes aren't open. Um, and I talk about these cards as in like, he doesn't see what's behind him. He's, he's kind of like shiftily looking to the place where he thinks the threat is going to appear and he's not looking that way and he can't see behind him. So it's a somewhat closed-minded way to approach things, but it's comfortable. It's comfort zone energy. This pairing is, for me, it's like fighting things off to be able to stay in the comfort zone. And to be honest, that takes a whole heck of a lot more effort than moving into the new does. It's just that it feels like a very detrimental thing um, to move into a new space. 
if if it's unfamiliar because there's no safety there the comfort zone is the place that the ego likes because there's no potential to look silly there you know or be out of your depth Sorry, the pets are kerfluffling downstairs. So let's talk about this more. I know I said 24 minutes, but we're at 30 and that's fine because we're almost done. Let's talk about it more. What do we need to know about this time? Because this isn't this isn't like if 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 you've been listening to me talk about this and you're like, oh, I know what this pertains to. This is about something that happened like last week. That's not it. It's gonna be something around either self-love or a relationship or a new way of like relating to groups of people. That's still love, right? Um, I think sometimes we forget that. Like the groups and the friends that you frequent, there should be love there too, right? It's not just um being around people for the sake of being around people. I mean, unfortunately, I think a lot of social groups are kind of like that. And it's comfort zone energy. A lot of people tend to be around other people who validate not only their their good parts, you know, and how they relate to each other when they're all happy, but when they all bitch and complain. People like people who bitch and complain in the same ways that they do, because then they don't have to stop doing that. <laughs> it's acceptable. It's socially acceptable in that in that group. Here we go. This is what we need to know. Okay, so yeah. Um, all right, I'm being taken back to the scales again. Okay, so this does have to do with self-love. It has to do with something in August that we wanted, but we weren't focused enough on ourselves. We wanted it from the outside in and we've done a lot of inner work and healing and now we still want it or take it as you will, right? There's a lot of ways to kind of put this energy. So I'm trying to be kind of general about it. But now we've done certain work where we know more about ourselves. And we also know... We know more about th this idea around the fact that like what's meant for you, there's, there's no getting away from that. It makes me think of what I talked about with that six-year prophecy again of being like, okay, so I just have to live my my life now and and I'm just gonna change a lot <laughs> like yeah what else are you gonna do um and that's a reference to a, another reading that I did if you didn't see it but all good things I mean I'd go into it more but this isn't a sticking point right it's just the realization that there's still some comfort zone stalemate energy and it's asking you like I said in the reading from the other day you've done a lot of work you're at a crossroads, you're at a new manifestation, like juncture to go forward. And it was 3311 when I looked up, 3311. But you have to rise to that challenge. Like when you've done all the work to kind of set yourself up to do something new, then you got to do the new thing and you have to do it in the new way because we can act all day in uh, a new space and stuff, but you're still going to have little things that come up that pull you into like old ways of being that doesn't go away. It's just about the awareness of being like, maybe I don't have to respond that way this time. Maybe I don't, maybe I have that feeling, right? That, that feeling, but maybe I know this time that that feeling is me being a little triggered, right? By some, it's not about what just happened in this dynamic. It's about me. And I know that now. <laughs> and maybe I wasn't comfortable acknowledging that before and being like hmm, it is about me but now we do that and the quicker we do that we transmute it and you don't bring your internal stuff into like collective dynamics you're not a person who projects people don't feel like you're emotionally volatile you know they're comfortable being around you because you know how to handle your energy and they know that you're not going to be one of those people that comes around and just dumps everything on them or something um because you're a self-regulating machine Clarify that. Victory and success. Recognition. I mean, prosperity begins. Love begins. Victory, success. Nothing wrong with any of this. I spoke too soon. Except for the fact that we're a little bit stuck and overwhelmed. I put this on the community, community page the other day, but I said... 
Feelings are functions. Even your overwhelm. That's, that's the whole thing about the human experience. We sit here and we're like, I'm overwhelmed. I have to fix it. Something's wrong. No, sometimes it rains. Sometimes it shines. Let yourself be overwhelmed and see what happens in that space. Bottom and top. To clarify that. Yeah. So the seven of swords. Then we have temperance. With the... What did I say? I said seven of swords, but I meant seven of cups. Because this is the seven of cups. But this is the seven of swords. Okay? Seven, seven. And what I'm getting about this combo is that... The inclination with overwhelm, right, is to not feel so overwhelmed. Okay, it's full. Um, and cut corners somehow to release ourselves of the overwhelm with this energy. He's like taking more swords than he needs. It's kind of a selfish stealing away thievery energy, sneaking off doesn't want to have to fully like do it the right way and temperance is asking us to think about that to think about like I think about this okay when I was a child don't judge me I'm sure a lot of kids were like this and I, when I say child I mean like up until I was a teenager um and I still do this to some degree okay not to the same way that I did when I was a kid but a lot of kids just tell little white lies, um, but it's in the form of protecting themselves, but it's out of convenience, right? And I also think about, I've shared, uh, well, it was weeks ago now, but I kind of grew up with like a chronic fainting issue. And as a child, I just didn't want to kind of tell anybody about that. It was a strange thing within me where I felt like I had done something wrong. And I was like, I don't want to trouble anybody with my issues. Um, or when I was uh, like 10, I had my first visual migraine. And if you're not familiar, if you push on your eyeball, like push on it and let it start, um, getting all cloudy with like those rainbow, like shapes that come in. If you try to blur your vision up, you know, manually every now and then that happens to me, but I don't push on my eyes. I just slowly lose my vision and it lasts for like an hour or an hour and a half. And then I get a massive headache after, and I have to kind of be in bed all day. Um, and it's just a specific kind of migraine. But when I was a child, I was at a swim lesson for the first time and I lost my vision. I couldn't see and I didn't know how to communicate to anybody about that. And I felt, I was like, I think I'm going to die now. And I guess that I'll just have to kind of lie down in the grass and hope that nobody notices. And then they'll take my body to somewhere after they realize that I've perished here on my swim towel. You know, that, that wasn't the case. I made it through. Um... Why am I talking about this? Oh. So not doing things the right way. But when I was younger, I didn't know that I wasn't doing things the right way. I genuinely wanted to. <laughs> well, there's a lot of reasons why a person would develop like, I feel like an imposition, right? Type psychology. There's a lot of reasons for that. A lot of people have it. A lot of people are people pleasers and feel like they're a burden. Um, and I've done a lot of healing around that. I no longer care if I feel like a burden to other people, not because I don't care about them and their feelings, but because I know that I'm not for being a child who's having a migraine, right? Um, or anything else. But sometimes we don't know that we're not doing things the right way because it's the way that our conditioning or our wounding, it's the only way the only way that we know how to go. But with the work that we've been doing, the healing work, the revelations, the self-reflection, there's another way. There's another way. And this could be this could be a bunch of different new ways of doing things that you didn't see before. Um, if you don't see it now, you're going to feel your way into it, just like the card said. Like, maybe you're not like, well, where is it? I don't see the way. That's because it's Harry Potter and the Patronus. It was not his dad. It was him in a different time loop. Casting the Patronus, it's you. You have to step into the void to see the magic happen. If you took your life off of a... If your life was like a pool stick, birth, death, and it was like on a rack, on the wall, like pool sticks are, and you took it off and you saw 
that's the point when I, when I figured out how to do that, all the time after that, that, that occurs, no longer has that issue with it. So we're at this crux where we're like, I don't see the new ways yet, but we're really being birthed into a higher level of, um, I think it's like an energetic stewardship, right? Like if you continue to show the universe that you use your power and resources for good, I'm not saying like give the shirt off your back and neglect yourself. You give to yourself, you're full, and then you give to others to help. And because, you know, everybody has a way to engage in that type of feedback loop that's individual to them. I like being very social and giving. I'm a, I'm a cancer. I'm a cancer woman. Like, what do you expect? <laughs> that's how we are. But uh, everybody has their own way of being in that type of alignment with energy and with abundance and with the self. So I'm seeing that like, and seven and seven, right, is 14 and that's five and that's change. So the overwhelm is giving way, but what, what I think it's going to give way to, if you're still in a place of feeling confused about whatever it is, is that you're gonna try to, it's, it's like present moment, however overwhelmed you are or not, goal or thing, <laughs> that is between you and this two of swords card with the stalemate. It's not going to change, right? You looking at the outcome. It, I don't think it's really the outcome or the stuff that we're doing that's going to change, but it's something on the side that comes in and offers another piece of information. And by this, I just mean maybe one day you have a little revelation and you're like, oh my God, I never thought about it that way. I never saw it that way. And now I realize that I was always doing it this way, you know, something like that. But it's not the main mission. It's this It's this augmented part of our understanding that will help us with the main mission. And temperance is about that balance and that infinite loop of constantly departing, always arriving, being at the restaurant and not banging on the kitchen door, but being patient. And it's a card of deep, deep, deep healing. Because if you can keep your ego at bay enough to be patient for what it is that you want. And I mean, patience is sort of non-existent when you're at peace. When you have inner peace, it's not hard to be patient. So sometimes, I mean, temperance, healing and, and balancing, but doing all of that within the stuff that's inside of us to just be more peaceful, right? With whatever comes. Um, Cause then you're always patient. I mean, patience is a form of peace. That's a nice thought. Patience is a form of peace. Okay, I'm gonna get a rune to close the reading and I'm gonna put the meaning of the rune in the description box so you can see what um, what it means and I'll interpret it a little bit and kind of carry the reading through with a, with a written text or a you know what I'm trying to say, description, but this is our lasting card. It's the Page of Swords. Hmm. Um, there also could be some sort of like delay with something you're trying to coordinate or like some type of mix up. Um, again, just have patience with that. If that's your situation and this reading has resonated with you so far, <laughs> you know, know that you're gonna get the right information at the right time. And know that you don't always have to have all the information in order to do what you think is best, right? Because there's actually not a wrong answer when you do what you think is best every time, each time. That's that's the only thing that I would expect out of anybody is to try their best, right? A lot of people in the world today, one of, one of the reasons why I'm so... Well, I don't want to go on this tangent. Okay, just think about how hard it is to get a hold of the people that actually work at companies, right? And if you do get a hold of somebody, they don't care. They're just, you know, uh, a part in a, a cog in a machine 
corporate headquarters, they don't really care. You can't even access, you know, to try to give like feedback or report something or get help. And um, it sort of feels, I mean, there are genuinely good people out there who care about what they do, but in a lot of places, a lot of people who like work in, in nine to fives and stuff, they're just entirely apathetic. They couldn't care less. They do not care about what it is they're doing. Therefore, they do not care about what it is that their job or their efforts, like the impact of that. If you don't care about what it is you do, then you don't care about the impact of what it is you do. Um, and people are just lazy, right? And, and like not that invested. I mean, there's a reason for that. It's because we're meant to be creatively, passionately tied to our purposes and um, connect our abundance to to those passionate outlets. And that's not the way that the world is right now. So, I mean, it makes sense that people, I don't expect you to be like over the moon smiling all the time if you're like a teller at a bank, but uh, I'm not really sure why I got off on that one either. I'm sorry, I'm scatterbrained today. One more card from this deck to finish that thought. We got our third seven, triumph. Why can't I ever remember what these are? Triumph, I should know what number seven is, especially because I am the chariot, it's a cancer card. I'm gonna try to get better at knowing what the astrological zodiac correlations are to the major arcana major arcana cards because i don't know that and if i've never said this before i don't think i've ever said this on the video i'm not like trained as a tarot card reader i don't know how to do a celtic cross spread or, or any of that um i kind of do things my own way but if, if it seems like i'm like missing information i am i'm self-taught 100 percent. so um but i'm always getting better if you go back and watch my videos from a year ago i didn't even know how to shuffle um <laughs> so it's our second chariot, our third seven in this combo. And um, with the king of swords, I think that I was just trying to kind of conclude by saying that it's like chameleon spirit from the reading the other day too. act as if the answers will come. In fact, you'll be shocked once you leave this comfort zone, right? This defensive thing, nine of wands and the seven of wands. And I see Harry Potter again, right? To conjure the Patronus, you have to put yourself into a happy place. And I mean, it's so like symbolic and metaphorical, but in order to create a protective energy that comes out of the wizard's wand, makes an animal shape and can shield you from bad energy threats. This is like Harry Potter, right? The Patronuses, they have to vibrationally convince themselves they're in a happy place or connect with the energy and the frequency of love. Harry always uses the memory of being with his parents to be able to conjure his stag Patronus, which makes him think of his dad and stuff. And so it's, um, it's optimism. It's like stepping into the unknown, even if you're overwhelmed, even if you could have done it and would have done it a different way in the past, uh, knowing that those answers are going to come. When you bring that energy into the space, you're protected. You're protected. And any type of failure perceived in that space is only ego wounding, right? Because misdirection or like those types of snafus that come from taking leaps of faith are realignments. They're not gone, they're not gone unnoticed. Okay, I know I said I was stopping, but I've just got, there's a no, one more message trying to come out here. There's one more message. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Here you go. 
here's one more message. Emperor, King of Swords, Seven of Wands, another seven. If you've been seeing a lot of sevens, then this reading is for you. <clears throat> All right, so this is super interesting. I mean, I don't, somebody watched my reading and, and they asked me like, I hope that your people know that you don't like rig the cards in any way because some people might think that. No, you, you see, right, that I don't, I don't have to, nor would I want to. Um, but it is kind of miraculous the way that they back up the messages. Um, so, yeah, I mean, stand your ground. In the other depiction of the Seven of Wands card, it's like a fighting thing, but it is standing his ground. He's fighting off any type of threat that's that's coming into the space of compromising what he's created right but if you keep things out and don't let yourself be evolved by external stuff then you're keeping yourself stuck um even if you think you're keeping yourself protected <laughs> excuse me so there's a fine line around protecting yourself and your stuff uh a fine line around remaining open but very spiritually protected open to experiences but not being a pushover or a doormat and understanding how to have a sense of self and confidence that isn't domineering or cold, right? It's like well-earned. It's like unspoken and it's embodied. And so you just stand your ground within that. And I'm also getting that this is like, this is the embodiment that like, uh, <laughs> Cyclically, energetically, this has been a long time coming. So it's a really good thing. <laughs> it's a really good thing. Okay. Uh, I, did, I didn't have to do this because it's, it's a lovely note to leave off on and I should have just quit while I was ahead. But I just want to point these out because these guys now are cards that I haven't pulled for a little while, but this being the Six of Swords, moving on, moving on, Disruption would be our tower in this deck. And then we've got Five of Cups, Emotional Loss. So all of this, right, and these are male energies, and he's alone in every card. In this one, he's going somewhere new looking towards the light. In this one, he's feeling all chunked up and compartmentalized. And in this one, he's lamenting things like, I always see this as like a time spiral, emotional loss. It's the crying over spilled milk. But anyway, they're very different than these three guys. So it's a new embodiment that we've worked hard for. But the shadow side to any of this is like, there will be tiny little distractions that pop up and say like, remember when you used to do it this way, or you didn't have, you don't have to. Who knows? These are not the types of tests that are like, I hope she fails. I want to see you stumble. No, the universe wants you. Like, it's neutral, right? It's you. This is a collective manifestation. So why wouldn't she want to? Why wouldn't you want to grow and evolve? All right. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, look to the description box if you want to see the rune. This uh, interpretation... And it's going to be our good luck charm right now. Mm. Ingus. See it? Kind of. All right. Sending everybody love. Hope you're good.